advertising is particularly good at attaching emotions to brands. Um, terrific example from years back is uh, a car called the Renault Clio. Years ago, they launched with an advertising campaign featuring a couple of daft French people, Papa and Nicole. The whole idea of that ad was supposed to be that the Renault Clio is a terrifically easy car to drive. However, when you look at that ad, what you're looking at is two people flirting, being terrifically sexy. And of course, what that does is result in you thinking the Renault Clio is a terrifically sexy little car, and lots of people want to be sexy. The result, the most successful car launch ever in the UK. Meta communication are all the twiddly bits, the music, the characters, the setting, the storyline, anything that's not actually to do with what you're telling people. The interesting thing about uh, meta communication is that we are programmed not to be able to unprocess it. Once it's exposed to us, we've got it. Here's a good example. The famous Apple 1984 ad was shown once on um, midnight in 1983 and once in the Super Bowl in 1984. And yet that ad is known practically all around the world. The ad is the girl running down this aisle with all these zombie-like people and she hurls the mallet through the screen. And of course the message in that ad is very simple. The world is being dominated in that era by IBM and Apple is going to break out of that era. That idea of Apple being the defender of the people, the defender of freedom, of course reflected into Steve Jobs who became the epitome of the defender of the people. Which means people who buy Apple computers and in most cases astonishingly, even though that ad would never have actually been seen by them on air, they know about this ad. And they feel Apple is a terrific company. And in that respect, once you get a reputation like that established, it's there forever. There's a company called Huawei who've recently launched an ad featuring a little creature called a GNU being photographed. And the guy who's photographing the GNU um, looks at his photograph and he imagines what's going to happen to the little GNU. It's going to be captured, it's going to be put in a zoo, it's going to have things thrown at it, da 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 So he decides not to take the photograph. And the message is, with Huawei, you can be your own judge of morality. What absolute nonsense. I mean, Huawei's a phone, it doesn't allow you to do anything. But emotionally, very appealing. How do you stop your emotions being influenced by advertising? Well, in, in my book, there's only two ways to do it. One is just don't watch any advertising. The other way, curiously enough, is to watch the ad very carefully, is to look at it and to say, what are you trying to do? What are you trying to influence? What's really behind this ad? If I see this little furry animal in the woods, what's it there for? Is it there? to make me feel good about this brand? Yeah, of course it is. And by doing that, you can do something called counter-arguing. We're not used to counter-arguing the emotion in advertising. But if you look at the ads, if you, if you look at the emotive content in the ads, if you listen to the music, you can say, ah, I know what you're trying to do. So emotionally, you can counter-argue that ad. Of course, it probably won't work, but at least you can feel you're slightly more in control of your life than the advertisers are. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed that, be sure to check out these videos next. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and click the bell to get a notification each time we upload a new video.